This is Andy Perrault for Boxing News. I'm drawn by Jordan Gill over Zoom. Jordan, it's been a while since I saw you. I saw you or spoke to you was obviously on the back of one of the best nights, if not the best night of your career, that victory over Michael Conlon. Since then, how's life been treating you? Yeah, it's been good. Just been busy. It's all systems go. Um, had a little uh, break, had a couple of weeks away and a um, little Christmas with a family and then back to work and got another fight penciled in so yeah buzzing before we come on to uh, that next fight with Zelfa Barrett let's just go back to that night against Mick um, the life changing victory for yourself how much have you looked back on it have you watched the fight uh, numerous times or yeah I've watched it a couple of times um, I always I'm always the worst like my biggest cricket critic uh, but you know I made mistakes in a fight but I got the job done and uh, what we worked on through the camp, you know, weeks after weeks, um, you know, drills and drills and drills. It paid off on the night because, you know, that's what got me the win. And um, yeah, we just have to move forward now. I know obviously you had confidence anyway, but when it's your first fight under a new training team and you produce a performance like that and it's shown that everything you've worked in with Jimmy was able to produce on the night, how much more confidence and belief does it instill within everyone that, it's all systems going the right direction as a unit. It, it gives you the confidence because, you know, it's always there's always going to be a question mark when you're a uh, change training uh, team. And for me, I knew it was it was the right decision. I knew that I was performing better. But to, to put it into practice in the fight, um, you know, when you're away on, on away soil and when... You know, you have a box for 14 months. All these factors add up and, and I was just pleased that I performed uh, the way that I did and got the win. And and next time, I'll be even better. We know, obviously, it's not taking place next, but Mick Conlon did have that rematch clause. Would you Have you spoken to Mick at all since? Are you surprised that maybe he hasn't invoked it yet? Still waiting to see what he's going to do next? Uh, yeah, I'm not sure what he's going to do. Um I think his family probably would like him to call it a day, but I'm sure, you know, his pride and the fighter in him um, still wants to continue and probably wants to rematch. But, you know, I'm open to that fight. Um, I was I was disappointed they didn't take the rematch, but um, is is what it is. You know, there's, there's other fights ahead of me. And um, if they want it, they can have it. And... Um, I'm I'm happy to do it. I'm happy to go to Belfast again. Um, is what it is. Let's uh, let's uh, just move on and and see what's next. I'm sure it'd be easy enough to negotiate a new deal uh, if it's to be the case. But do you know if kind of a rematch clause is timed out? If there's a time frame on when it has to be kind of stepped upon by Mick? Um. No, I don't know. Do you know what? I don't read the contracts too much. I, I, I look at them once, make sure everything's all right, and then I'll just sign it. So it was like a few months ago that I signed it, and uh, I can't really remember. I think it, it could be my first or second fight, Um, you know, after that one. So obviously my first one's already booked in. So I think they have the option to, to use the rematch clause for the one after this one. Um, But if they don't, then they lose their opportunity. Moving away from that, moving forward, Zalfa Barrett. Um, talking about how this fight came about, it was one which it does make sense, but also on the back of your victory against Mick, some would have maybe thought there was a bigger name maybe out there for you. Yeah, I mean, it's a big fight. Uh, it's a fight that I'm happy with. Um, I don't think there was too many other names that, that was in the hat, to be honest. I think it was a case where we're both... Um, been European champion, we both want to get onto world level. And, you know, I'm up at Super Featherweight now. He's, you know, world level at, at Super Feather. And it was an easy fight to make in the way that we're, we're both with the same uh, promoters. And the winner will move on to a world title shot. So um, for me, it's a no brainer. We want to progress. We want these good fights. We want to give the fans what they want. And um, it was a fight that I had to take uh, to, to progress and move on in my career. People looked at the fight with uh, Conlon as a crossroads fight for you both. People somewhat look at the Barrett fight in a similar vein. Uh, you're both obviously looking at trying to get towards well done as yourselves now. And the loser, it's it would knock one of you back, you'd imagine, a, a fair bit. Is it more basically more pressure being piled onto yourself? Do you feel like this brings the best out of you knowing that? Um, I think there's a little bit more pressure for this one um, because when I went to Ireland, 
everyone looking at me all week as if I was going out to the firing line. No one expected me to win. They thought, oh, Jordan just come for one last payday. And, you know, I went to Belfast and I, I've done Michael Conlon. I'm going to go to Manchester. I'll have to do Zelfa Barrett there. Um, you know, I've just shown, I'm shown that I'm willing to take these opportunities. I'm willing to take these risks and, and willing to progress. I think there's a little bit more more pressure because, you know, some people are expecting me to win um, this time. But it doesn't matter. It's, it's just a fight. It's just me and him in the ring and the ref. And uh, whatever will be, will be. If he's better than me on the night, he'll win. If I'm better than him, I'll win. We saw that more aggressive approach against Mick Conlon. Obviously, we know the team down at uh, the Ben Davis and Jim that they work to their opponents. So if they feel like you're fighting somebody who needs to be more aggressive with, you will. Somebody be a bit more kind of not defensive with, but maybe box a little bit more. You will do so. How do you approach yourself for Barrett fight? Yeah, it's a it's a different approach to the Conlon fight. Um, very different. Um, but there, there's similarities with them both. Um. In other ways, obviously, I don't want to give too much away, but um, yeah, Connor, every there's it's not one size fits all, so it's just um, every 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 opponent has weaknesses that you can exploit if if you're willing to to do the work and willing to drill the drills. Um, and and you know, I've shown that I am. I've shown that I'm uh, I'm willing to learn and and progress and and do well. So I think. Um, is it's going to be a mixture of, of boxing and pressure and and it depends how Zelfa comes out as well but uh, we'll have all angles covered we'll have um, everything drilled in the gym uh, time after time and I'll make sure that um, I'm I'm the best version of myself on the night and um, if we have to adapt we do um, if it's working then we'll stick with it and be consistent and um, you know if shit hits the fan I'm ready to, I'm ready to swing it out. Um, Jordan, one thing I'm also kind of I want to ask you about a week after you fought Mika, I went out to San Francisco and obviously Dave Caldwell, your former trainer, was working with Ebony Bridges out there. We spoke about yourself and what kind of the, the difficulties and the problems you had in your personal life leading into the Condon fight. And it, it was a difficult one for him to speak about. Um, he obviously, you know, don't want to say it broke down, but you know, it's difficult. Like I say, it's very emotional for him to speak about seeing you in that state, uh, in the build up to the fight opening up afterwards about what you'd been through. Um, what's that like to know how much Dave cares for you? And it certainly comes across as if like he sees you as one of his own, yeah, it's nice, isn't it? Like, there's not many people that you can rely on in, in, in the sport, but you know. Dave was one of the first people I spoke to after the fight. He was buzzing for me. Um, you know, we had a little FaceTime in that in the hotel lobby. He was out in America at the time. So the timing's worked out. Um, and obviously everyone had gone to bed and I never sleep after a fight. So I think it might have been about two or three o'clock in the morning. Um, yeah, we had a good chat and he's just just happy for me. And and I know that he always wants the best for me. Um, and you know, part of me moving down to to back home was was due to my personal life and um i think he's seen that the, the change has been good for me and and that i'm i'm happier and um got just starting to get my life together and uh yeah i think he can only be happy for me how much of a benefit has he been moving back down south but having one of your best friends lee wood in camp with you as well yeah, it's been great. It's been great. Um, not only am I at home, I've got my home comforts. I've got my gym that I um can call in more often. I've got um Harlow, which isn't too far for me to drive. It's not too much for travel. Um, Lee's in a gym, and uh, we always get good rounds in. Or oh, if there's ever a question that I need answering, like, I'll always pick his brains. He's he's got the experience. He's been at that level for a long time now, and. You know, we come through the game together. We come from the small hall shows, selling the tickets and, you know, having to pay for opponents and, you know, struggling. I slept on the floor for 10 months for the first uh, 10 months of my career. Um, I lived with Lee for six, seven years and, and Leo. Um, so it's nice to be in a gym, seeing him get the rewards that he has worked hard for and myself getting the rewards that, that I've worked hard for because, you know, it's not been a smooth journey. It's not been... Um, plain sailing and uh, for us now to both be you know fighting at, at the, the best level um, is really sweet and, and I'm absolutely over the moon for him um, just like I know he is for me Lee by his own admission maybe doesn't have too long left in the sport 
Um, with that in mind, there's a lot of talk about that Josh Warrington rematch, and maybe that's a little bit in jeopardy now, knowing that the City grounds off the to off the cards for this year. Um, have you spoke? Like, what can you tell me about how he's feeling about that? The frustrations which he might be carrying at this moment in time. Yeah, I can tell you that he's feeling shit about it, um, and I'm feeling shit for him because if anyone deserves a homecoming at you know the football ground, it's him. Um, look what he's done in the last few years it's, it's been incredible and he really deserves that night at Forest and I'm absolutely gutted for him that that he's not going to get it and I try not to talk about it too much to him because I know how much it means to him and I don't want to you know, bring the mood down a little bit but yeah he's absolutely gutted um, and I don't think he's sure what's next but hopefully um, Eddie can come up with a plan and get something for him that he's happy with Um in the, in the next couple of weeks. Uh, Jordan, moving away from all things Leeds, just a few other topics. Obviously, you're in camp down there, down at Ben Davison's gym. You got Mr. Anthony Joshua to learn off and pick his brains as well. Have you had much advice from him? Have you crossed paths much in the gym? Yeah, um, I see him quite a lot most days. I see um, AJ, um, lovely fella. Um, I don't really, I don't know, I don't pester him too much. I know he's always got a lot on his mind. He's got a lot of people, um, you know, to please and, I know he likes to focus on the boxing, so I don't really ask him any questions. Um, you know, we have little interactions and, you know, um, he, uh, I put him on FaceTime to uh, who missed his the other day and uh, made her day. Um, but yeah, just, I don't know, he's just a nice guy and um, I try and, if I ever going to ask him stuff, I try and ask him stuff, nothing to do with boxing and stuff about his life because I can imagine that people always question him about boxing and he must be sick of it. Um, but yeah, no, he's a good guy. Um, I walked into the gym a couple of weeks ago and he asked me about Ngannou and I, I didn't feel qualified to to answer his questions. But um, it's nice that he picks my brain as much as I pick his. And, and like, you know, we're all just trying to better ourselves and just trying to learn and, and improve in every aspect that we can. What do you make of the Ngannou fight? I think it's a great fight. I said to um, I said to AJ, oh, to be honest, mate, I was I was dead impressed with Ngannou against Fury. Uh, he did a lot better and he shaped up a lot better than I expected him to. I think he's an absolute mammoth of a man. I think he's big, strong, durable, can take a shot, um, and I think he's a break break him down job. I can imagine that um, you know. AJ will break him down and probably get him out late, if not a, a wide points win. But I think either way, I think he'll do a, a better job than Fury did uh, because I actually thought Ngannou won that fight. Um, and if anything, that just sets up a bigger fight with Fury if AJ does a better job on Ngannou. So, you know, it's, it's a no-lose no situation. Um, on that undercard, an interest I'm just in, intrigued to pick your brain on is Joseph Parker and Jean Gillet because it's divided opinion. Hmm. Good fight. Um, it's a great fight. Um, it's hard to pick a winner because obviously Jang is is very durable, very tough. Um, throws plenty of punches. Dealt comfortably with Joe Joyce. Um, Joe Parker had a career best win. Um, last time out against Deontay Wilder, you'd say that you know Parker's been in with the best in the world. Um, Jang probably hasn't. Um, you know, I think Jang's best win is is. Um, Joseph, um, what's not Joseph Parker? What's his name? Joe okay. Joyce. Um, and if you look at Parker's resume, he's boxed all the top guys and and done well against them. You know, he's been in with um AJ. He beat Andy Ruiz, who was world champion. He beat Deontay Wilder, who was world champion. So you know, he's beat two world world champion, previous world champions, and and uh, Shang hasn't. And you know, experience plays a big part in boxing, especially at the top level. So. I think um, it's an interesting fight. I can imagine Parker outboxing him. Um, but whether he'll weather the storm or Zhang, we'll see. There's only one way to find out. Sticking with heavyweight, it's a come out of yours as a big British heavyweight title fight with Fraser Clark on the horizon. Mr. Wardley, that is, of course. Just your thoughts on, on Wardley Clark. I think it's a great fight. Um, I think it's a fantastic fight. I don't think it's an easy fight for either guy. Um, I think Wardley, big fab. He's um, he's very explosive. Um, he's improving all the time. He takes his job very seriously. Um, he's always in the gym working hard. And, you know, I'm sure Fraser is as well. But I think um, you know, Fraser has great amateur pedigree. Um, he's a good boxer. Um Maybe a better boxer than Fabio, but 
I think Fabio will win the fight. They're both nice guys. Fabio will win the fight um, by knockout. And and I just think Fabio's fresher. He's uh, younger. He's um, got less miles on the clock from the amateur scene. Um, and I think the game plan that they'll put in place for Fabio will, will exploit Fraser's weaknesses. I, I can't see Fraser being able to deal with, with Fabio. And, you know, the occasion is going to be a big one. So at the O2, top of the bill, it'll probably be a sellout. I think that um, Fabio's had those nights to deal with. Fabio's had uh, good opponents in in um, the professional ranks, and Fraser hasn't really stepped up yet. Um, not to say that he can't, but you know he's he's not not the man with the experience in the pros in that ring. And and I think um, I think Fab will get a job done. This is me in the mirror. We got dumbbells up to fifty kilos, big weight bench. All the machines, leg press, shoulders, chest, whatever. Um, so this is our little uh, weights room. Um, this is the boxing gym. So we got our uh, cable machine just random there because that's the only place for it. We got Fury and guard, uh, Fury music on the wall. Two rings. Got the water bags on the wall here. Is um some ugly fella on the wall. <laughs> uh. We've got a PT going on here. We've got our sled trap. We've got all the Olympic lifting plates. Um, got all your machines. We're getting a curved treadmill. We've got two treadmills, stepper, uh, skier, uh, two skiers over there, sorry. Um, and uh, got a big mic and up Holyfield on the wall. Um, a fully stocked vending machine. You, got, you ain't got sweets in there, surely. No sweets, just uh, good <laughs> Just good is we got a uh, what bike, air bike, uh, battle robes, every everything you could imagine in a gym. Big Rick. Yeah, you know what Jordan? He honestly, like, he, I imagine, looks a lot better in person, but looks fantastic on here. Like, I'm very happy for you. Thanks, mate. Um, yeah, it was big. Um, it was a big project, but um, we're getting there. This is going to be the shop. Um, so it's going to have like a roller shutter. Yeah, we'll sell all our gloves and, and uh, supplements and stuff in there. So, yeah, it's all systems go. So how often are you training in there or are you splitting it between there uh, and... Um, yeah, so I'm swinging in between there and, and um, Harlow. So I do my boxing in Harlow and I'll do all my strength conditioning um, in this gym. Right, well, I'll leave you then to, to catch up with your strength and conditioning then for the session. And oh, yeah, nice. thank you for speaking to me, showing me a little bit of your new gym. And I look forward to coming down soon, Jordan. Always welcome.